Hopefully you can hear me. I don't know if this thing's connected or not for sure. There should be a way to preview it on the phone. I'm still trying to figure this out. I've got it on my GoPro there, but I'm trying to figure out. Okay, view your stream. Yeah, that's what I wanted. I wanted to, now that's how I like it right there. I can I can see the stream right here on my phone. So that's really neat. Let me see this thing up and get comfortable. I don't know how long I'll be able to do this. My windows are fogging up big time. Or if this is even connecting right, it seems like, is it slow? I can hear myself here. No, it's working pretty good. I like that view. That GoPro is a really good camera. I really like that. I'm in Kentucky right now. I'm heading home again, but today's Friday. So I, since I've had this fleet manager, I've never went home on a Friday, but I'm actually going to get home. I think I've got two hours and 32 minutes of uh, drive time and four hours of on duty time. So I've got quite a bit of time left. There's there were some uh, like four or five guys here when I got here. I've been here before, actually. Um, it may have been in one of my videos, uh, but I've been here before. It's raining quite a bit right now. I noticed uh, coming back to Kentucky this time, it was everything has really greened up. I said that I think last week and maybe even a week before, but I can I could really tell it this time. Especially in Kentucky, it seemed like uh, Kentucky was actually greener than some of the places up north. I guess maybe where we're kind of more down south here. I'm not positive, but. But yeah, I don't know how long it'll be. But the thing is, even if they, he's gonna call me on this phone, so that may mess this stream up. If it does, I'll try to reconnect. Cause I enjoy doing these every now and then. I noticed that last one, that last live stream I did, which was last Saturday, I believe, uh, I had taken it off of there because uh, me and Big Steve were talking and <laughs> Big Steve cussed a lot. That was only the second time I ever talked to him and, and I guess he really opened up a lot cause he cussed that time a lot. There's my wife. Hey, LOL, I'm here. There she is. Little attitude, little Miss Attitude. Love you, Chastity. I'll be glad to see the kids. <laughs> Seven people. I, um, I'm getting uh, quite a bit of messages. I'm, I'm looking at my phone. I need to look up there. I'm getting quite a bit of messages from people saying that they're starting with rail. Uh-oh. Okay, that might be a truck coming in. But I'm getting a bunch of messages from people saying they're starting with rail or they have already started with rail or like uh, Maximum, he messaged me and I think he said that uh, he is uh, starting with his trainer here soon. And then Jason passed his uh, permit test. So he's got his permit now, that's huge. Somebody else told me that they got their permit. But a bunch of people have been reaching out saying they're in the, either in the process of getting started in trucking or they're already in it uh, so that's really neat adrian how's it going adrian good to see you good to hear from you looks like we've got nine people you can see these windows are plumb fogged up now i really like the view from that gopro though it's got a really good camera i've got it set now though to 1080 uh 1080 hd or something i think i called it hp before but 1080 hd so i should definitely get home today that's awesome and and i got good miles this week like today i got already and and i've still got two hours left right now i've got 506 miles today already and i've got like i said i've got two hours of drive time left still by the time they get this done i'll still have two hours of drive time probably you know i could use every bit of that so i could today easily you know if i was to keep working get over 600 but they're going to be sending me home but this week has been pretty consistent as well but one thing I was saying about that last live, I get off track a lot. I'll start talking about one thing and then completely get off track. But anyways, Big Steve liked to cuss a lot. So I, I took it off there, that video. But uh, it's up there right now. But I, I, there's a way, I think, to edit lives. I am going to try to edit that part out. Um, I know some people, that ain't a big deal. But to me, I don't. It is to me. It, um, I, I don't. That's why I always delete comments if they've got cussing in them and everything. But, but yeah, I noticed that video got over 800 views, and I thought that's pretty interesting. So it shows that people are interested in everything, and that's neat. Um, but now I think I'm on week nine now, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, this is week nine for me with rail, and it's went by really quick. I was looking on there earlier, and it was saying that uh, back when I did the uh, get, get Your CDL program, 
uh, that that was around four, that was four months ago. It said on YouTube, so I didn't realize that was that long ago. Which it has went by. It goes by fast. Even these weeks when you're out here on your own driving, they go by really fast. Like today went by really fast. I mean, I, it's it's in a way 506 miles already today, and I've still got time. Which I got. I get up really early, so I really like that. Like last night, yesterday, I I, I started my 10-hour reset around 2 p.m. Um, but I had got up around 2 a.m. So. Finally caught you live. I get tested next week, Tuesday. Give me your driver code so I can get you some money. Hey, Terry, that's awesome that uh, that you're getting started here soon. I don't know if I have a driver code, to be honest with you. I'll have to figure that out. I know if you're a trainer, you do, but I don't... I, oh, wait, I do have a... I have a code, but I don't know. That'd be neat if it did do something. I do have a driver code. I don't know why I'm thinking, but I don't know if it... What I meant was I don't know if it does anything for me where I'm not a trainer. I'm really considering that owner operator program. Lots of people are telling me no to that and, and I can see why, especially with the economy where it's at right now. I'm glad you're here though, Terry. It's good to hear from you. Finally caught you live, he said. Clint Turkey Wild, what up brother? How's it going, Clint? I've heard from Clint quite a few different times too on here. Everything's, I keep looking at my phone. I gotta remember that the camera's right there. I keep looking at my phone and talking. But, uh, cause I'm used to doing lives on this so I have to get used to that. But yeah, that that last live, it got over 800 views in, in like a day, so I was pretty surprised with that. It, it didn't happen while I was live, but like, you know, once your once your live is over, it uploads it to YouTube and people see that it uploads, and then it seems like mine get more attention after they're uploaded, but they get some attention while they're uploaded as well. You do, I do, Terry Skinner. Okay, well that's awesome then. I'll give you my driver code, I'll be happy to do that. Um, just got... Just get done in my major surgery. I go in for my permittance. Oh, Clint, I think I remember you saying you were going to have a surgery, if I'm not mistaken. I think I remember you saying that. So did that surgery go good and everything? It must have went pretty well if you're going to be planning to get your permit test on the 19th. So you'll be the third one here recently then that's, uh, well, two have got their permit, and now you are talking about getting yours, and then Jacob from Kentucky, he's uh, talking about getting his as well. I hope Jacob does. I think he'll. I think he'll be happy with it if he goes through with it. I'm talking to so many people. I'll tell you one thing, there there was a, uh, and, and I ain't trying to be uh, sexist or nothing like that, because uh, I'm not, but I'm saying like, most jobs I've done, men are usually better at them because they're real physical jobs, but th this woman the other day impressed me with how she backed into a dock. She did a really good job. I was pretty surprised, actually. I mean, not like I said, not trying to degrade women by no means. She just, like even for anybody, you know, it was good. She did a really good job, and I kind of just watched her, and I was thinking, wow, she did a good job. She made that look easy. It's a referral code you get. Let's see. Referral and when the student can be straight. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that sounds good to me then, Terry. I didn't even know that I, I was able to do something like that. That'd be awesome. So, Terry's going to get Adrian. Yeah, I didn't know I got anything like that. I knew trainers did because I put my trainers in, in the videos when I was with him. And like I said, that went by so quick. I, I was with him for, I think, 24 days or something with my trainer, something like that. And then I did a skills test and and because uh, you have to pass your skills test as well, which isn't really too bad. Um, but then they ended up making me wait like a week for a truck. And so by the time I was able to get a truck again, they, they made me redo the skills test. So I had to do it again. The first one I did in Marshfield, if I'm not mistaken, I always get mixed up between them two terminals in Wisconsin. There's Marshfield and what's the other one? I always get mixed up between them, if anybody knows. But, um, and I had to redo it in Gary, Indiana, which the guy, it was, it was pretty easy and pretty laid back. And then there was another test, I had close quarters. I, it was more like training though, the close quarters. And I, I felt like I did pretty well with that as well. But yeah, I'm seeing lots of different people uh, getting into trucking right now. But but like I said, I, I said I was interested in doing that owner-operator program. And the reason why, just because your pay goes up so much. And like lots of people are telling me like, even though that's true, like right now, you, you do got to pay everything yourself. You got to pay insurance, if I'm not mistaken. All that stuff comes out, but you make so much more. But my trainer which he was a trainer as well, so I'm sure that helped him. So he was a trainer and an op owner-operator. He said he was clearing 2500 a week after t after he paid everything, after he made all his payments. So I thought that was pretty good. Starts day one, your company. Day 
Okay, that's good to know, uh, Terry. I'll, I'll, so I wonder if that's the code that I use to log into the computer here. Because that's my driver code, if I'm not mistaken. So, if that's the case, yeah. Yeah, I, I know I've got that code. Okay, I see your whole comment now. There was a little heart thing in front of your comment, so I couldn't see it very good. But yeah, and it, uh, and the thing with rail is, from what I heard, you know, like with that owner operator thing, if you get into it and it, and say you it ain't working out for you or something, and, and it ain't going good, from what I heard, you can go and tell them, hey, I, I'm not this ain't working. I want to be a company driver again. And what I, I'm planning to finish my uh, contract with rail. So I was thinking, well, you know, one thing I could do my first six months, I'll be a company driver, then maybe try my the rest of the time until I complete my contract, which is 120,000 miles. Um, and I don't know how many miles I've got for sure, but right now on this truck, it had around 2,000 when I got this truck. Now it's got over, over uh, 10,000, but the last truck I had put probably 2,000 on as well. So that ain't that many miles really, maybe 14,000 or something is what I've got. Yep, start day one, you come. Thank you for telling me about that, Terry. I didn't even know that. So that's something I can give out to people then if they come here and, and yeah, if I can get money from that, that'd be that'd be neat for sure. Jacob is planning to come, if I'm not mistaken. He's planning to come. Uh Willie on Wheels is another one. He's the he's one of them that got his permit here recently. And uh I'm very happy for him as well. But yeah, what I was thinking with that owner operator program is, you know, for one, I can do it and and just see for myself, you know. I can see for myself is it is it worth doing or not and then i can also have that recorded and show everybody else because lots of people are saying the videos are helping i've been trying to be pretty you know on top of as far as uh documenting everything like i did my training i even did a video on my commercial learner's permit uh, then with my trainer and now uh phase three when i was by myself and now here i am you know out on my own for two months so and i've been trying to document that and i've been trying to be honest about everything because there are days that are bad and days that are good there's some days that are very stressful out here and what i mean by that is well like these trucks are huge and and the, with the trailer and sometimes you get into these places and they're just it's a mess especially like in places like chicago chicago is probably about my least favorite place to drive that i've been to yet it's got some really uh, tight quarters places time to go back to training leave it in comments see you later see you later terry I wish you the best with it. Oh, so you're training. He's training right now then. He gets tested, he said, next. Yeah, Terry, I wish you the best with that. Now, I didn't know what you meant, so you're training right now. I wish you the best with your training, Terry. You said skill test. What do you mean about how to do a skill test? Okay, I'll try to describe that skills test. So it's kind of your skills test is kind of like your CDL test. I am keep looking at my phone. Your skills test is kind of like your CDL test, um, but not as extensive. So um, when I did it at the at the Wisconsin terminal, uh, I got out there and he didn't even like it. It was really pretty simple, really. Like we went up to the truck and you know you've got a pre-trip on your regular CDL test. Well, he just kind of went over it with me, talked to me back and forth. He didn't make me name everything. And then after that, we got in the truck, did like a road test where you drive on the road, and then came back and he had me uh, back in between some trailers. But he even, when I was doing that, gave me some advice and he actually gave me a, a pointer that was very helpful to me that I hadn't heard from anybody else up to that point. Uh, that guy did, that my skills test. It almost seems like to me more like training than a test. Unless you do really bad at it, then I think you're fine. I was very nervous though. And, and I, I, was, I was so excited because I passed it and then they sent me home for a week and I waited on a truck and then they told me, well, you're going to have to do it again because you've been home for a week. So I was kind of discouraged about that because I, I was just really nervous to do it, to be honest. But yeah, that's what the skills test is, Clint. Uh, you've got a, it's kind of like the CDL test, uh, when you, when you, but not nowhere near as extensive. I guess they're just trying to ensure you're doing good and everything. If I'm not mistaken, I don't know if there's any more I got to do up now at, at this point. As far as I know, I'm pretty, I'm uh, good, good at this point, but I'm not positive. But I was nervous with that, but it was, I mean, they're very, I think even they are a lot more laid back in that because they know that you've done been out with your trainer, you've got your CDL, you've pretty much proven yourself at that point. I think it's kind of just a little, like almost more like a training program in a way. And then the close quarters was the same thing. Uh, I did that at the Gary, Indiana terminal and uh, 
it was pretty easy really these things get easier as you go with time like the trucks even now i'm finding that uh like they talk about lining the lane up with your shoulder you know when you're facing forward so like say you're going straight and you got to turn left well wait until you get that lane with your shoulder and then turn well that works a lot of times and that's what i use a lot of times like when i'm going to fuel pumps and stuff like that but then when you're out on the road, some you'll just see sometimes, you just gotta pay attention to your tandem is something I've learned. You don't wanna take your eyes off them because you may think you have it and go right on and you look back and then you're about to run into a sign or a person or a pole or something like that. So you're very welcome, Clint, no problem. No problem at all. But I think this is something that just comes with experience. The more you get out here and get experience on your own, the better. I got into a place the other day, I was really Oh, I was, I was just stressed out and aggravated too because uh, there are some people out here on these roads that are dangerous, you know. Of course, we all know that, but you see it a lot more frequent when you're a commercial truck driver. Well, the other day, it's in one of my videos, I was about to pull into this place and this car tries to go around me and in, in, to the left of me. Um, and I had no idea until I seen him coming and then I slammed my brakes on. Well, once I got into that place, I went to the wrong place there and then he told me I had to go back out. When I tried to go back out, the way I was going out, they had concrete, these big concrete blocks sitting there. And uh, it took me a while to get out of there. It was, I was pretty frustrated. And then there was a lane too one time I pulled into, cause I thought it was a gate to go into a place or, or maybe I was turning around and I get all the way to it. And then I say, see where it says no trucks come in there. That was a hard one to get out of. That's why I say all the time in the videos, like, especially when you're by yourself, and I seen a fence there, this chain link fence, and you could tell some truckers had tried to get out there and they hit that fence. They had almost taken the chain link fence down. But uh, whenever you see signs that say trucks, you know, aren't supposed to be there, try to avoid those at all costs. And then on that, like when I come places like this right here where I'm at right now, I try to look as I'm going in and think, well, what is the best way to park to where I can get to that dock easier, you know, and get turned around easier. And I don't want to block anybody else, but at the same time, I don't want to park in a place where I'm going to get blocked or where I'm going to have a hard time turning around and getting set up and stuff like that. At rail, they say, uh, I, how I remember remembered it was ASTF, which is approach, set up, turn, and finish. And that's like when you're going, say you're approaching an intersection, you know, that's the steps they want you to go by. So you work on your approach and then your set up, your turn, and your finish. And uh, there's steps, all that. I can't remember all of those, but it is a smart way to look at it. And so the approach is a big thing. You know, that's something I try to pay attention to a lot. Like uh, when I, my GPS, I was trying to go to a Walmart and I've kind of learned my lessons with Walmarts. But anyways, I was trying to go to a Walmart and it, well, your phone, GP, your, your GPS on your phone will take you places that a, uh, a truck isn't really supposed to go. And so I was down this road and it was a four way intersection. And I could tell as soon as I got to this intersection, there was no way I could make this turn. And uh, there was a lane going, I've mentioned this before, there was a lane going straight and there was a lane going right. Well, I got in a straight lane because I knew I had to. Even after doing that, I still came about that far from hitting a pole and taking it out. So that was my approach. I knew from the approach when I got to that intersection that I needed to take that lane, even though I wasn't supposed to. I had to, I knew it. There was no way in that, in that turn lane, if I were turning it, I definitely would hit the pole. But even after I took that turn lane, the cars had to move and let me, and let me get in, so. Uh, but I, but from one thing I'm learning is the experience is very valuable. You know, there's with my trainer, I learned a lot from my trainer and stuff. But when it really started setting in and kicking in, and and I really started feeling like I'm learning the most is when you get out here on your own, Br really like anything else. But then, it, but your your trainer and other people kind of set the foundation for you to learn. You know, they kind of give you something to learn with. And then when you get out there on the on your own, what I've done anyways personally is I'll use what they show me that I believe works. Some things that I don't agree with, I won't use. Like, for example, my trainer said, like, say you're gaining on somebody on the interstate. And he, well, he would used to tell me just slow down and stay back, you know, slow down a couple miles an hour and they'll get ahead of you. Well, I don't do that. I, I usually go around them and go on. Little things like that. But he also showed me many useful things that I, that I do use, you know. And then some, like that guy that uh, did my skill test, he showed me a useful useful maneuver actually the other guy did too when i did my skills test the second time he had, had like 20 or 30 years experience and he showed me a really uh skill from skillful um maneuver too that nobody else has showed me so those skills tests really are uh, a good thing uh, i really just look at them as a as a training opportunity in a way i was really nervous but it's very laid back uh, if you get your cdl really at that point you should feel pretty confident 
if you if you can go through all that and get your CDL, so at that point you've done you know done your DOT physical, you've got your permit, and then you've done those three weeks. If and then you get your permit or your CDL. If you do all that, you should feel pretty confident at that point. Because after that, they pretty much just put you out there. Which you're with a trainer, but even with a trainer, he sits there and, co and coaches you and stuff, but you're doing the driving and stuff. Which it is very good that they have a trainer with you at the beginning. I think that sh they should. I don't think I don't think uh, that they should leave you on your own at all. But once you get, I remember my first day out on my own. When you actually get out on your own, my trainer said the same thing. He said his trainer, he got kind of aggravated at him. Maybe near the end, they butted heads a little bit or something. I can't. I don't want to put words in his mouth. I can't remember what he said exactly, but he pretty much said something to the nature of once he got out on his own, he missed having him there because he was because there was times I guess where he felt like he needed to ask him something, and uh, you just kind of learn these things as you go. Um, like something I've learned, these places for one thing, the Rail app on your phone. Let me see it here. On this app here, they have a thing called Ship Advisor. It's a very useful app. Like right now. I'm at this place called Sheridan, Kentucky, and I'm in Versailles, Kentucky. Now look right here, I'll try to show it to you if I can. I don't know if you can see that or not. But anyways, that's the place I'm at right now. They give it a rating on here. It has a three out of five star rating, this place does, that I'm at right now, and I can leave it a rating. Like here, I'll read, and then they leave reviews, and sometimes, some, this place isn't, well, this place is a good size too, because actually, when I first came to this place, I used to go up front there, and they. I, this is my second time coming and they told me up there they said you're at the wrong place you got to go all the way around and go back which you don't learn that a lot of times until after you've been somewhere at least one time um and then when you get there sometimes some of these places have 10 buildings and these huge parking lots and so you've got to figure out which one has the door that i need to go to because some of them will have numerous shipping and receiving offices i went to a place at a, i think it was a menards or no home depot i went there uh, yesterday too if i'm not mistaken but the first time I went there, they sent me to one shipping and receiving office. They sent me to another one. When I went to that one, they sent me to another one. And then that one said I was supposed to, the one before them was supposed to take care of the stuff for me. So, but anyway, this ship advisor helps a lot with that. Because these people on here sometimes, and I and I left one the other day. Because I once I found the entrance, and you can take pictures as well and post that. But once I found the entrance, um, I left a review and said, Hey, look, I think it, there was two different buildings. And I said, the entrance on the building to your left is by door one, uh, dock one. The entrance on your building to the right is by dock 20, which is around the center of the parking lot. That's very useful information because when I got there, I had to drive all the way around the building. Then I realized that I was at the wrong place. I tried to go out a gate back there and circle around. Then I realized the gate was closed and you couldn't get at it. So then I had to figure out a way to back up, turn around, go back. There was a yard guy there and I asked the yard guy, I said, where's it? I just... I said, where's the entrance to this place? And he was a very friend, uh, friendly guy. <clears throat> and he told me, he said, there's uh, two or three buildings here, I think he said, that all accept rail, you know, deliveries. He said, so you got to figure out which one you're going to. And I showed him my paper, my BOL. And then from that, he, he told me which one to go to. But then when I got to them, they told me I had to go to the other one. So I, in, in, on the ship advisor, I wrote down where both of those entrances were. Um, but like here, let's see, Richard Shoestock. There is a there is road construction and railroad act railroad active tracks on site. You check in with here's another person, Shauna Benjamin. You check in with shipping and they send you around the corner to receiving. Very friendly and fast. A lot of space to back, but the docks are really tight. Also, it's very messy. See, well, I mean that maybe that's a different place here because where I'm at here isn't like that. But this place probably has numerous docks. Overnight parking allowed if delivering. That's a good thing to know if there's overnight parking allowed. Because, like, there's been times before where I've got to a place and my time runs out while I'm there. Well, if they have overnight parking, you can stay right there for the night. And some of them have bathrooms and vending machines and stuff like that. Some of them don't even allow overnight parking. So then at that point, what you'd have to do is put it in personal use and find the closest place that is safe and legal to park. Back up to an open door. Tandems to the rear doors open. Once you're unloaded... They will come out and sign the BOL. This guy says they're closed on weekends. Numbers don't work. Nice people prompt. So it's very useful. And then the Rail app has other things as well. Like you can go to your workflow on this app. That Rail app is something I use a lot and something you'll use a lot too. And so what I do, like whenever they ask me for an order number or whatever, I'll go on here on the Rail app and 
you'll figure this out as you go. I won't explain too much of that because it'll just be confusing hearing it. But the rail app is something you'll use quite a bit. And that ship advisor is a very useful one to use on there. It really is. If you're having trouble finding somewhere or something, like say you get somewhere and you don't, you have, it's huge because you will do that often. I have. And I'm a regional guy, so I can't imagine national guys or gals. But say you get somewhere and you're looking and you and all the doors you're pulling on are locked and you can't find it nowhere. Well, get on ship advisor and look down through the comments. There may be someone on there that tells you exactly where that shipping and receiving office is. Otherwise, you may spend 30 minutes to 45 minutes doing it. Me and my trainer one day, I think, spent like an hour and a half, two hours looking for, looking for a place because it was a new site. So it's a very useful app. I would definitely try to utilize it a lot. But this is week nine for me, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I'll have, it's either week nine or week 10. And that after six months is when I'll qualify for that owner-operator thing. And I'm really thinking hard on, on at least giving it a try. And uh, there may be a minimum amount of time that you have to stay with that. I don't know. Maybe if somebody else knows later, they can comment on this and let me know. Is there a minimum amount of time? Or, or I, I spoke to the guy on the phone the other day, actually. I spoke to him on the phone. And I don't know if y'all remember this, but uh, the other day I mentioned uh, how that I had got almost to the Gary, Indiana terminal and uh, I ended up pulling over at an Oasis because I had like 10 minutes of drive time left. That was it. And I wasn't going to make it in time. So I pulled over to this Oasis. I put it in personal use and then I drove the rest of the way there. Well, my fleet manager contacted me about that and she said uh, that you're not allowed to do that. She said that any time that you... Uh, put it in personal use. The only time you can put it in personal use is like, say it's I'm somewhere like right here at a, a, a shipper or a consignee. Uh, so this is a consignee. So say I run out of time here and I have no way and, and they don't, they don't have overnight parking or bathrooms. Well, uh, then I can put it in personal use, but I've got, if I'm not mistaken, I've got to call them, put it in personal use, find the closest place that is safe and legal to park and then park there. Um, but the way that I did it, um, it wasn't uh, the, the way to do it. And then I had to call safety and compliance. And what they did was they changed it and they put that personal use time into on duty time. And so I went over my on duty time and my uh, drive time and I got a violation. So I got a violation now. And uh, so I told, I told my fleet manager, I said, so that gives me a violation, right? And she said, yeah. And I said, well, so does that kick me out of uh, qualifying for that owner operator program? And, uh, she said, I don't know, I'll have to transfer you. And she said, what I'll do, I'll give him your number and tell him to give you a call back. And well, like that, that, that later that day, or maybe the next day, I got a call from a guy. And it was the guy that's over that program, I guess. And uh, anyway, we ended up talking about it. And I asked him, I said, so does that make it to where I don't qualify for that owner operator program? And he said, no. And I said, so I still qualify? He said, yeah. He said, you just need to work on your speed because there's quite a few times where I'll speed. But I'll tell you something else too, though. Sometimes you'll go to these roads and they'll have a sign that says like 45 miles per hour. And if you go that, you'll probably be about the only one there going that speed. Everybody else will probably be going 60. <clears throat> I'm not sure why. And sometimes it'll pick up, it'll say that you're uh, like in a 45 mile per hour zone when it's really a 55 mile per hour zone, but it'll register on this co-pilot that it's 45, so it'll say you're speeding. Um, but then there was times too to where I just tried to, I tried to go fast and kept it at 65 or more a little more when I get go down hills and and that that caused me to speed as well but anyways that's something I have to work on and then my distance getting too close to people that happens so easily my trainer even told me he said he used to do that a lot make sure they my trainer said he used to do that a lot and uh, it kind of surprised me because during my training I did it when I was with my trainer I did it probably like eight times or something um, and what I'm talking about is once you get so close to them and you stay there for, it seems like two or three seconds. If you don't back off in time, it uh, gives you like a distance warning alarm or something like that. Well, it, they see that on the computer when you do that. And uh, my trainer said he did it a lot and they finally told him, I don't know if it was when he was a company driver or after he became an owner operator, but they finally told him that he couldn't get any more. And so that's, I guess that's probably part of the reason why he just would slow down and stay back, which is understandable. But they told me I had to work on my following distance and my speed. And he said, in August, your six months will be up. So August is when my six months will be up. Well, as, as long as I can work on that stuff and get it to where it needs to be, then I can qualify for the owner operator program. But lots of people are telling me to, people with lots of experience like Mike of the North are telling me to watch out for that. Uh, 
and uh and i understand where they're coming from and 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 it just i don't know i'm kind of caught in between whether i should at least give it a try or not if it was something i knew i would be bound to for the whole time i i would not do it um but knowing that it's something that i can maybe give it a try and then if it doesn't work i can tell them later on hey look this isn't working i, I want to be a company driver again knowing that that makes me kind of want to give it a try and i spoke to a guy at the terminal in georgia and he had bought he had two trucks from rail that he purchased uh through their program so he purchased one and then he was either paying on his second one or had already paid it off and he had been trucking for quite a while but too though his schedule he said he would be out at six weeks at, for six weeks at a time that to me no never like right now i'm ready to go home and see my family so uh, for me in the long run, like a guy told me the other day, he said, you should change your channel name to uh, Lumberjack Trucker or something like that. And I thought that was, a pre that was pretty funny. But um, the reason why I'm keeping it Bluegrass Outdoors, for one, that's what it had been from the beginning. But also too, I'm not, I'm not uh, I just don't see myself doing trucking my whole life. And that ain't no offense to nobody. I ain't trying to discourage you from getting in or anything like that. If I did do trucking my whole life, it'd definitely be local, a local job where i'm home every night and that's the main reason why i want to spend time with my family you know i want to be with my kids and my wife it's not easy for me being out here away from them that's the hardest part for me um is just you know i see their faces on the phone and stuff and yes that helps a lot but it's still not the same as getting to come home to them at the end of the day every day you know and getting to see them so that's that's the main reason i trucking won't be a career for me in the long run unless it's a tow truck driver that's what i'm really wanting to make out of this i'll be honest with you i've said that before uh, but that ain't, and I'm not trying to dissuade you from getting in the trucking because I think it's a great career. I do think if you have children, though, that local is the way to go, really. I think if you get into this and and uh, you have a family, like like that one guy said, he said it very well. He said, uh, your your children, when they're little like that, they don't understand why, you know, mommy or daddy's gone. They just know that mommy or daddy is gone. They don't understand why. We know why. Um, and I don't regret it glitchy hello hello glitchy sorry i just now seen that comment and i'm not but I, like i said i'm not trying to dissuade you from it at all because i think trucking is a great career but for me personally having four little kids uh the youngest being two and the oldest being 11 and my wife at home i'm 32 she's 28 uh i want to be there for my family you know as often as i can daily really i want to be home every day that way if something happens or you know i'm right there and stuff that like the other day we had those tornado warnings in kentucky that was a stressful one for me for one the, that work day was stressful and then and i'm not trying to be doom and gloom on you i'm not trying to be negative but i'm just telling you this is the realities of it you know i was like probably 500 miles away from home 600 miles away something like that and we've got these big uh tornado warnings you know, and, and they talk like it was going to be really bad. And uh, so that had me stressed out. I was on my headset listening to them and stuff and uh, w listening to the weather. And then I was talking to my wife, pulled over, talking to her all the while, trying to find new places that I'd never been to that I drove around for an hour looking for because the address was wrong on the on the uh, workflow. So that's all part of it. You know, I think for somebody that's single, it's a much easier thing. It is. For somebody that's got a family, it, it's going to be something you're going to have to learn to cope with. And that's what I'm doing. I'm coping with it just fine. But it, but is it something that I see myself doing my whole life? Uh, no, because of my family. That's the main reason why. But like I said, possibly local. Possibly, but me, but I'm an entrepreneur. Like I, I want to, I love working for myself. But, but I, and I, like I said, I love trucking. I do. And, and, and maybe in the long run, I'll do it for myself and, and, you know, for a local company or something like that. But really, I, I've got my kind of mind set on a, being a tow truck driver, and this is very, very valuable experience for that. So, but that's how I feel about that. Glitchy period dot. I don't think I've ever seen them on here before. Hello, hello, glitchy, glitchy eight eighteen, <laughs> glitchy eight eighteen. Yeah, it's taking a while here, though. These guys, hopefully I won't be here too long. Like I said, I've got enough time to go home. I got started this morning at about, that's why I got so many miles right now. It's only 1.52 p.m., which isn't early, but I've been here for probably 40 minutes. And uh, so that's something that's going to, which I think I'll be fine. I've got three hours and 27 minutes of on-duty time. I think that, and I think I'm only probably about an hour, hour and a half from home. There's my wife calling. 
wonder if I can answer that while I'm live. Nope. Hopefully that didn't kick me off of there. My wife was trying to call for something. But I am, I'm very happy with the way things are progressing. I am. Uh, because I know that every week I'm out here, every week that I put in with this is another week under my belt in trucking, which is huge, that experience. Once you get a year, like I said, I've researched it already. Because when things wasn't going very good with rail at the beginning, uh, I, 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 with my last fleet manager, honestly, I got aggravated at that guy quite a few different times and pretty bad too, honestly. because Just because of the way he would just kind of try to make you just deal with things. Um, and so I started looking for other jobs online for uh, like local jobs. And pretty much everything I looked at, not only did it require a CDLA, which I'm good there, but it required a year of experience pretty much everywhere it did. Um, and I looked into driving for the Dollar General which I think was local, if I'm not mistaken. and you. But I think that's touch freight, you know, you unload it, which I'm fine with that. Um, but pretty much everywhere, everywhere wanted a year of experience. So right now I'm two months in, and that's the way I'm looking at it. You know, 10 more months, I'll have a year under my belt with rail. But I do want to complete my contract with rail, and I'm not saying I won't stay with rail longer, you know, but I'm not saying I will either. I'll just have to see and look at what's best for me and my family, just as you should, you know. Be, more, be loyal to you and your family over a company. That's the way I look at it anyways. She said she forgot I was live. She just messaged me. But yeah, I'm meeting lots of lots of friendly people through this. Mike, the guy that gave me all this stuff, I mean, who who would have thought somebody would that had never even met me in, my, in their life would give me that much stuff? And I use it a lot, this, the things he's given me. A lot. I, I just now heated this coffee up with that mic microwave. They should be calling me here soon. I'm trying to work on my backings. I usually use that 45 degree backing. The 90 is a good one in tight quarters. That's the one I use the least though, but it's the best one for tight quarters. Maybe it really the only one you can use in, in tight quarters. Um, that one I need to work on more and the 45 as well, but I'm definitely getting more comfortable with that 45. Uh, something I was doing at the beginning, which threw me off a lot and my uh, instructor told me this at rail and my trainer told me this is I was just turning too much. Like when I was trying to back up, I was turning the steering wheel too far. And that guy told me like, just do quarter turns, you know, just, he said a little goes a long way, especially when you're going a long distance, you know, you don't have to turn it all the way. I was doing that. Then I was having to turn it all the way back because I overdid it. So it just takes time though. Like anything else, it just takes time really. Oh, hold on. Sorry, Glitchy. I just seen these comments. Sorry, I didn't realize y'all was commenting. Let me see here. Ted Hill, I done local for years and still didn't see my family much. Usually home enough to eat, shower, and got to bed, then back up and gone 14 to 16 hours. Was killing myself and didn't realize it at the time. Why were you gone so long, Ted? You only get 11 hours of drive time, don't you? Was that was that uh, rest of the time that was equaling out to 14 to 16? Was that like time you were on the docks or, or what? But see, to me, I would be happier with that, at least being home, you know, getting to tell my kids good night and stuff like that. That, to me, would make a huge difference. That, watch out for, for some of them local jobs, though. Some are 30 stops a day, and you unload everything. Hard work plus some work, you 14. Okay, well, it looks like both y'all, Glitchy and Ted Hill, are kind of saying similar things there. So, so when you're local, they really work you a lot, it sounds like. That's my daughter's channel name, but my name is Matt. Okay, gotcha, Matt. If I may suggest something, get 30 months experience and apply to Walmart or get a tanker endorsement. Those jobs pay well. Yeah, I was talking with somebody about the tanker jobs here a while back. His name's Mike of the North. And uh, I think he said in Canada, you've got to have like five years under your belt to qualify for a tanker. But I th somebody told me in the United States it's nowhere near that long. Somebody had commented that here a while back. 14 hours total and then travel time to and from. Wow. Yeah, that that's that's a long day for sure. Yeah, by the time you get done with that, you're tired, aren't you? I, I do, by the time I'm done with these days out here, you know, 
I, I put in about 14, 15, 16 hours. Uh, but I mean, like, that's with the loading and stuff as well. Like here, I've been sitting here for 40 minutes to 45, something like that. And uh, no telling how long I'll sit here. Like I don't know, I, last time I was here, I think I was here for a good hour and a half. Hopefully I won't be here too long because I, I definitely don't want to be this close to home and not make it to home. My trainer did that before. And I think he said his wife came and got him. Well, this is good advice from you all though. Y'all, you all have the experience. Ted and Glitchy. But yeah, something I'm, I'm really, uh, I, I had thought on it before this even, but that something I'm very interested in is trying to be a, a, a tow truck driver. Cause I had my own business for five years in landscaping and I had a family member that did, uh, that, well, he still does it. Uh, he drives a tow truck. I think he's done it for over 20 years and he stays busy. Um, and I, fe I feel like this is very good experience. If I'm not mistaken for a t somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, if they see this, or hear this but um for a tow to be a tow truck driver i think you got to have a cdl b don't you and an a is above that right am, am i not mistaken or am i mistaken i hear you ted hill it ain't fun i was lucky to get four hours of sleep wow that is yeah that that, that does sound rough if it's like that i didn't realize that uh local was that 